Weymouth, Little Sea Holiday Camp. I used to go there when I was a kid with my mum and dad. When I had some, um, a little bit of success, I thought I'd go and rent one of the big caravans to Tobadil because I thought that was what you did. That was really, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a time when Le Bon's going to Montserrat on his yacht yeah, yeah. and I'm renting a caravan at Little Holiday Camp thinking I was lording it up. My name is John Doran and I write about music. In this series for Noisy, I am interviewing notable figures from British popular music. On the surface, it may be hard to pin down what connects these disparate figures, but as the series progresses, I'm hoping it will become clear that they are all unique talents and outliers in their field. Today I'm talking to Gary Newman, who became an overnight sensation in 1979 when his post-punk group Tubeway Army released the single Our Friends Electric and then achieved worldwide success later in the same year with the release of his first solo album, The Pleasure Principle. In short, Gary Newman gave birth to the 1980s. When you first came along, obviously it was the synthesizer that people really associated you with. But wasn't your use of the Moog totally by accident at first, wasn't it? A little bit. Um, I got signed as a punk band. We was a three-piece punk band. I was um, guitar and vocals. We got signed by Beggar's Banquet as that. And then they put us into a studio to record what was our live set at the time, which would have been the first album. And I got to the studio and uh, there was a, a mini Moog in the corner, a synthesizer. Never seen a real one before. But I'm a bit geekier, you know, like knobs and switches and things. So um, they let me use it and I loved it. The very first thing I did, I, you know, I turned it on, pressed a key, and this huge, massive bottom end sound came out, and the whole room shook with it. And it was the most powerful thing I'd ever heard. You know, it made all the guitar stuff I've been doing seem lightweight. In the three days that we were there, making the album, I, I quickly sort of grafted on electronic things in, into the punk. So you know where the kids, the punks would have gone, no, 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 no. No, it went, and I just adapted it. Looking back at that, that time, which is like 1979, which is like such an, an amazing, I mean, if you stretch it to just over the year, you had three albums out, a whole bunch of singles, you were becoming famous all over the place. Right in the middle of that, I guess, there was the Replicas album, which is the last thing you did as Tubeway Army before you went solo. I was thinking about this the other day. The story to that is, deranged, like kind of androids who have cloned human skin, robot prostitutes, enforced homosexuality. Sounds a bit like my experience in Hackney in the mid 90s, you know, <laughs> but it's such a mad, mad story for an album. And the sound itself was so dead new, it was startling. Why do you think it struck a chord with so many people? Um, difficult to say really. Um, well, I think lyrically, a lot of, a lot of that didn't really come across to begin with. I don't think people really got it. My life range electric, for example, I don't think people realised that was about um, you know an, a robot prostitute when it was being playlisted on on Radio One. Yeah, I don't think yeah. they, they didn't get it. Yeah. So got away with that for for a bit. I, I just think it was just lucky timing. You know, just just the right sort of music at the right time. <laughs> So recently, he released a DVD we called Machine Music, which had like loads of rare footage from all the way through your career. And something that was dead interesting was the clip of you playing a couple of songs on Saturday Night Live. It's so weird thinking that before you did that show, which went out to 50 million people, no one knew who you were, and then literally a few hours later, you were like one of the most famous people in America. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from England, Gary Newman. Well, doing the show was great when I, I, I realised how important it was. I mean, I never heard of it before I got there. It was instant from one day to the next, you know, completely unknown, hugely, hugely known the next day. So, um, yeah, a bit weird. Great, though. Really, you know, brilliant, brilliant fun. I wanted to ask you about something really interesting, which I must admit, I didn't know until the last time I spoke to you. On the song, Our Friends Electric, you know, it mentions a man with a grey hat, long coat, smoking a cigarette. Now. Once you actually start looking for this figure, it crops up in your kind of history time and time again. 
there's like a figure in a few of the videos, like the one that springs to mind is She's Got Claws, the, the Julian Temple video. If you look at the amazing cover to replicas, as you're looking out the window, there's this figure under a, a lamppost wearing a kind of like a trilby and a long gray oh. overcoat. What is the story behind this this character? Because I believe it, it's like a really big deal to you. Yeah, well, well yeah, a ghost story. I saw a ghost. Uh, Piccadilly Underground Station. I, got, I was going up to Shaftesbury Avenue to buy my first proper guitar. Early afternoon, I think, late morning, you know, day, daytime. And got off the train. There's a few people behind us, but most of the people are up ahead. And we're, we're just chatting away, you know, we want to be in a band together and we're going to be famous, blah, 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 blah. Going off to get the guitar, big moment, and we're just absolutely just following the flow without even looking at it. You know, the people in front, and you're just following them to get to the exit. Um, a man in front, a few steps up on the escalator. Unfortunately now, my memory of him is it's all grey. But it wasn't at the time. At the time, it was just a normal person. He would have had skin tone and everything, because it wasn't anything weird about him. He was just an old man dressed kind of in a 40s sort of style, which seemed appropriate, because he was an old man and, and didn't think anything of it. Wouldn't take any notice. Um, loads more people ahead of him. Anyway, we go up one escalator, go around the corner, I think, and went up a second one, and got to the top of the second one, and. Um, and so he went round to the left and we followed him because we were just following the flow of people. And we went round about, I don't know, six, ten feet and the tunnel was blocked. And had obviously been blocked for decades, you know. The tunnel no longer went anywhere. But he had, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't there. So first thing I do is I, I thought, oh, hello. And I stopped. And then I thought, where's that bloke? And I looked at my, my mate Gary and, uh, and, he, and he said to me, where's the man gone? And I went, fuck, <laughs> don't know, don't know. And then we, went, then we realised, freaked, yeah, yeah, yeah. legged it, absolutely legged it. So yeah, and it had a big effect and it's been in, it's in lyrics and it's been on, you know, he was my image for yeah. a few years. There's a definite ranking system with ghosts though, isn't it? It's sort of like, like kindly blokes from the 1940s I just say live and let live, just let them get on with it. Ghosts of animals, I throw stuff at them, I laugh at them, they're rubbish. Ghosts of children, I, I can't be dealing with that, it's too hectic. Yeah. You know, and like ghosts with no heads, it's too much for me as well. Have you seen yeah. that Brazilian TV thing on YouTube? No, no, no. Oh, it's just brilliant, right? A TV show, it's a lift, people, are go the people think they're yeah, going yeah. for a job interview, right? They put them in the lift and they say, you know, press this button. So they get in the lift, press the button, and it appears to be moving. And, it, and then all the lights start to flicker, and then the lights go out, and it goes to, to night vision, so you can see, oh and they God. can't. There's a little panel in the side opens up, and a little girl gets in, oh. in the white robe with the doll, <laughs> looking like death, and then the lights come back on again, and the people see it. And they God. start going, they go mental, right? <laughs> and then this girl screams, goes, ah! people are chiming the walls. <laughs> then the lights go out again, and then she gets out, this little the lights come back on again, she's yeah. gone. Fucking brilliant. It's the best TV I've ever seen. Something that is dead bizarre is the fact that not only have you achieved one of your childhood dreams, but you've achieved two of them, which is like, you know, in some ways, you've got much, much bigger in the field of being a stunt pilot. Yeah, the air display thing uh, is really hard. You know, m most of the people that are doing it are military or ex, or ex military. If you come, come into that sort of thing from a civilian end, of it, um, they don't trust you um, in the same way that they trust each other. But when you come into it from a civilian and a, a pop star or, or a rock star, that may, you know the suspicion that you're just an idiot with too much money is pretty, pretty high, really. You know, when you're doing formation aerobatics, you know you're sort of four or five feet apart and you're upside down. And if I make a mistake, I'm going to kill them. And and these people are trusting you that you're not going to make that you're not only can 
fly the thing well enough anyway, but you're not going to do something stupid or strange or, you know, which will kill all of them. And so that, you know, that's a huge responsibility and obviously you need to be rather good for them people to trust you at that sort of level. And, and I really did love it, but uh, eventually almost everyone that I knew were killed in different accidents. You know, it's, a, it's a really dangerous thing to be doing. And so I just decided to get out. But I really miss it. It's the most exciting thing I've ever done. And I, I do, I do miss it. Do you mind if I get you to sign something? Can no, you? sure. I must admit, I chose this for its aesthetic suitability to be signed, actually. But it's still a great record. It's complex, the second single off Pleasure Principle. There you go, man. Thanks very much. Well, obviously, this was kind of around about the time when you were at your most famous. Did you enjoy it? And what would you be your advice to sort of like somebody who was in their early 20s, just standing on the verge of something similar happening to them now? It, it, it's it's a, a, a double-edged sword. It really is. There's lots and lots of things about it which are amazing. You realise what's happened. It's, you know, it's a really cool thing. Life. You know, one of the biggest dreams in the world that anyone can ever have, and it's happened, and it's really, really cool, and, and doubly so in a way for me, because people were talking about it as this new kind of music. You've not just made it, but you've made it doing something different, which I think most people would really, really like to think of themselves as being different, rather than just another indie band or another rock band. You want to be, make a certain mark of individualities. Yeah, yeah. So we're very, very, very cool. Um, but they're, 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 they're other stuff comes with it, which is not always so cool. And it's difficult to deal with it. You know, when you're on your own, everything, good and bad, comes at you. You know, any criticism or nastiness, you know, the press are fucking horrible to me, you know, across the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, people, you know, some people can be very, very lovely, but you have to remember the vast majority of people don't like you. And there's a significant number of them like to tell you how much they don't like you. And I had Asperger's, Jesus Christ. You know, I didn't have a lot going for me, did I, at the time? You know, an inability to communicate anyway. And, and then all that, yeah, been brilliant. So no, it was a bit tricky for a while, a bit tricky. But on the plus side, you did get the choice of your caravans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could have hauled the best caravan on the site, yeah. Yeah, so there was a silver lining. Always a pleasure, thanks Thank very you. much. Cheers. Thank you very much.